Uh, welcome team to communication skills improvement program oral and written day two. I hope you all are doing great. So let's get started. Can you see the screen? Okay, fine. Okay, so let's get started this way, uh, students. Let me do a recap of what we covered in the previous session. We started off this training program uh, with anatomy of speech mechanism. Later, we got introduced to global language that is English, after which we learned grammar essentials. Then we defined communication skills, process of communication, tips on how we could improve communication skills. We started with listening and comprehension. Later it was paraphrasing. And the next tip we learned was uh, probing. Later was uh, rapport building. So we are left with four to five uh, dras uh, tips that would drastically improve your communication skills, which we are going to learn in today's session. So this session definitely is going to be interactive session like we had yesterday. And I, we have decided that we are going to divide this into 30 minutes of verbal uh, communication and 30 minutes of written communication. So let's get started. What do you notice in the day about body language? So they both are sitting, they both are watching each other, right? So the next part is matching and mirroring. So before we go ahead and get started about this particular slide, uh, students, I would like to give you an example. Do we all know who Winston Churchill is? Now Winston Churchill is one of the authors and he is a presenter. Like uh, he attends many seminars and if we need additional information, we refer to Winston Churchill. So there was this scenario once he was interviewed and in that interviewer interview interviewer asked him, sir, there's a presentation to make in University of Texas College on leadership skills and that session will be for two hours. So do you how do you think you would be able to make it and how many hours do you need to uh, get all set, get ready for the seminar? So he, is strong, he confidently replied, I'm all set for the presentation. And this, uh, the, uh, the next time he went for the interview, uh, interviewer asked him, sir, there's this leadership uh, skills uh, training program that we are coming up with. We need to uh, give this presentation to only leaders and that particular presentation will be for 20 minutes. So do you need some time to prepare for it? So you know what he replied? He says, yes, I need some time to get ready for the 20 minute presentation because, uh, you know, 20 minute presentation and he asked them for two days time. So what did we learn from this particular uh, in conversation? So we learned that uh, it is all about economy of words and it's very easy if somebody gives you an opportunity to stand and start talking for like non-stop two, three hours. However, it takes a lot to customize it and to keep it short and specific. So it takes, uh, you know, effort to get to the point and say that, okay, see, we're going to do three mandates to, uh, to leadership skills and highlight those three keywords. And it takes a lot of effort to customize the entire conversation and make it short and clear for the audience. Okay, so having said that, let's get uh, all set for match and mirror, uh, guys. So match and mirror, do we feel like, see, somebody is leaping forward, we need to leap forward with them? Or does, that, does it mean like when somebody stands up, we need to stand? Or does it mean like, you know, somebody is not in comfort zone, then we should start hesitating and we feel like, oh, okay, when somebody is not so confident and they're not so comfortable, let me also, you know, uh, feel, not feel so good about it. It actually doesn't mean that. Match and mirror uh, means we need to uh, match and mirror with respect to the other person's 
their vocal qualities, the way they speak, and on what topic, what's the purpose of the conversation. So we need to concentrate there. And how many are times that we came across this instance that you joined a new organization and you went somewhere close to somebody and started talking to them and they felt like, oh gosh, don't you think you're so close to me? You know, in terms of proximity is what I'm referring to. So maintain distance, match and mirror when it comes to your communication, you reading between the lines and you understanding the person's uh, viewpoint from the place, from the purpose of conversation to what they're actually looking at. So that is the entire, you know, description of match and mirror. See, look at them. They both are sitting appropriately. They're both looking into each other's eyes. And of course, when it comes to talking, they both would be, you know, understanding that, yes, this is the purpose and this is the outcome. And we are going to uh, form an equation on that. The 18th month salesman problem, first person says, it's nice to meet you, tell me your name. And the salesperson says, I, I have just what you need. So it's not about selling all the time. It's all about forming relationship, forming that trust within two people. And then from that stronger place, we realize that, okay, I, I am going to certainly look forward to connecting with this person and uh, you know start off a strong bond and long-term relationship with them so context so let's proceed this is set context to your communication this is knowing how what when to communicate with your audience and context means circumstances that form way to an event statement or an idea fine so see, there are so many times that we, we we kind of look forward to, I am not certain on what uh, ground is this person actually talking on. And sometimes people feel like, okay, I'm somewhat confused at towards the end of, uh, you know, if somebody is not that effective. So that's why we say set context to communication makes it very easy and simple. Fine. So before we go and learn this in length, as uh, you know, all my sessions have a lot of um, examples in there, I would like to share a love story, you know, to, of course, elaborate on this uh, co context. So there is this love story about an old couple. So they are together for over 45 years. So now this uh, context is it's their anniversary. So for on this anniversary day, husband asks his wife, hey, what do you want uh, as your anniversary, as this anniversary gift? So she replies, uh, I have long hair. However, I did not style it well. I just need a comb because, see, they were from a humble background and it was very difficult. And he did not have any, uh, you know, maybe retirement benefit or he was not earning. I'm talking about the man. So they were very humble, from a humble background. So then this lady, uh, what she does is she says that I need a comb. So man understands, you know, from that particular place of understanding. And uh, then this lady, what she does is um, she asks him, okay, what gift do you need? So he says, I would, uh, my watch stopped working. I'm definitely looking at going to the shop and getting, getting it repaired. So then in due course of conversation, next day was the final their anniversary day. The, you know what they do? Man goes to the watch store and there he, he of course, feels so much. Uh, he feels like he would sell that particular watch. And then, he, you know, he sold the watch. He got money on behalf of selling the watch. He gets a comb for his wife. And what the wife does, she goes to the beauty parlor, to saloon, she get, cuts her hair, she gets money and she buys him a new watch. So eventually they both get, get home and then s look at each other in, with surprise in, in their eyes. So then that is the whole context of connecting with somebody from that level of, uh, you know, intimacy, love, set context to communicate and match and mirror each other's feelings. So th then we realize that that relationship is enriched, it's loving, it's beautiful relationship. 
So I would just, uh, you know, <laughs> like to, of course, start off this particular context, set context to communicate. Uh, that particular episode was a correct example where we could fit in this particular slide. Okay, so do we have any questions so far? Okay, so we'll continue. No, okay, someone says yes, all good. Okay, fine. Fine team, so we'll continue. Thank you. Okay, match and mirror. So we are going to learn match and mirror in length. First match and mirror is assertive style of communication. Be confident. Use stress buster, control pauses, and sincerity. Okay, so we know what's assertive style of communication. There are three styles, assertive, submissive, and aggressive. So follow assertive style of communication where you know that, yes, I am going to respect the other person's feelings, and I know where, uh, what a ground I stand, and I'm going to talk on, from that particular place. Okay, confidence, yes. So now quickly uh, write to me and uh, give me a few words, keywords, as in what you do to get out of stress, like stress buster. Okay, listen to music, have coffee, breathing, fine. Go for a walk. Okay, fresh air, that's breathing. Exercise, great. I have all this here. Okay, pray, fine. Meditate. Okay, gym. Uh, med go for, okay, listen to music, great. So, okay, thank you team. So, yeah, stay calm, very important. So some of the so few things that we could follow to get uh, out of stressful days are listen to music, go for a walk, <laughs> singing, drinking water, uh, walk your dog out, socialize with your friends, wash your car, go uh, get, go, do gardening, hit, hit the gym, swimming. So comedy, of course, humor. I mean, that plays a major role, of course, yes. So thank you. Thank you for your input. Fine. So that's about stress buster. Controlling pauses, very important. See, uh, there are two speakers. Who do you think would sound effective? Someone who is going slow and they pause in after a sentence, right? So that is controlling pauses and making sure that the audience is getting connected with us and understanding what we are trying to say. Sincerity, of course, it's a major, it plays major role. And it being sincere is, again, a factor that we always have to keep in mind. Okay, sounds good. So they may forget what you said, but they will never forget how you made them feel. So this is why it's your tone, your pace, pausing, set context to communicate, match and mirror plays major role and it has major impact on your oral communication and forms basic, uh, you know, ground rule to be effective communicator. Okay, so pace and pausing. Okay, now, uh, you know, let's go back to set context to communicate. I would definitely like to give you an example over there. See, now, generally what happens is if, see, as a friend, you call another friend and you want to vent that particular day. If you were not feeling all that great, you had some negative vibes, what you do is you call your best friend. You let them know that, hey, I just called you because I want to vent uh, because I did not have a good day today. So if you do not say this or set context before you actually start venting on the phone, well, how do you think the other, you know, your friend would react or respond? Of course, they would feel like, oh, God, what is he up, she up to? Like, she never spoke to me like this in this tone. So set context. Tell them that, okay, I'm not in good shape, but I am going to certainly vent, and this is why I just called you to feel comfortable. So that is one instance. So keep the you know communication channel open and clear. 
Now the second instance is at home when you you talk to your mom or you talk to close people at home. So we need to set context to your communication because then the other person feels like I don't I'm not sure where he started and then where, where the conversation is heading to. So for that purpose, it is important to let them know, okay, fine, we're going to the market today. So keep things clear. So and, uh, you know, crystal clear as in they would really like to talk to you and then uh, they feel happy about connecting with you. So those are the two examples which would set in, set the context for your communication. Now for pace and pausing. So pace of speaking is also accompanied with pauses. Pause have to be right in the right moment. A pause can be highly effective in emphasizing the upcoming subject and in gaining listeners' attention. However frequent, arbitrary pauses spoil the speech. Very important for the speaker to carefully monitor their pause. So now, uh, pace and pausing. See, uh, did you uh, ever see two people walk together? What do you notice when people are walking together? In, Of course, in group. So I am really looking forward to you typing in your response. Okay, so two people walk together, they talk, okay, they are talking to each other. When one speaks, the other listens, okay. And what else? Okay, someone talks and the other person listens, the same one. They walk with the same speed, right? Okay, uh, thank you. So I thanks for your response, uh, team. So I would like to elaborate on this eye contact, but then when uh, two people walk in the same direction, you think that there would be eye contact. Okay, anyway, I mean, only yes, when they are talking to each other. Okay, so a uh, team, here's the example. Pace and pausing, when two people start to walk with each other, the first one either adjust their pace with another one or the second would adjust their pace and they both are in sync. So that is the way that they proceed and then they keep, you know, in the journey of the, uh, the walking bit of it. And that is with respect to the uh, walking part. Now, when we say something, we need to pace with the other person because we have different types of audience. Like they can be, uh, you know, quick, quick graspers. They're like people who are laid back, who catch things uh, not so soon. So pace yourself, go slow so that the communication is clear and everybody gets the message that you're trying to convey. So that is about uh, walking and in speaking skills. Now, this is gen uh, this would affect you in general now if suppose imagine that there's someone that who's light and shining armor who wants to sweep you off know that it would not be so up and up and so promising so we need to pace ourselves and be mindful of uh, what we are doing as we walk this journey of life so that is something that's relevant to the journey of life so there's three contexts one is when we speak, the second one is walking, and then generally in life, how we are going to pace it. Okay, so pace and pausing, let's move on. Next we have vocal qualities. Okay, so for vocal qualities, we have uh, like, uh, we've got to learn first is what's volume. So volume is how loud or soft we speak is our volume. And uh, second is pitch. Pitch is defined as highness or lowness of the sound of the voice. Okay, so volume is loud or soft, how, I mean, how we say. And then pitch is highness, lowness of the sound of the voice. Rate of speech. Rate of speech will be number of words that we say per minute. So it's ideally between 60 to 70 words per minute. And of course, slowly and in a nice way so that it is effective. The other person is able to understand us. 
So that's rate of speech. And then we have intonation. Intonation is speech, music. So now speech music is sometimes, you know, you find speakers who absolutely sound monotonous. You know, they don't sound energetic, enthusiastic. They like same uh, flow from the start to the conclusion. So emphasize on few words, like stress on few words so that you sound intonated. And then you sound so interesting that the other person feels like, wow, what a dynamic communicator or a presenter. So like that. So that is intonation, tone, amount, tone, quality. How, what is the definition of tone? We define tone as uh, the way we express our thoughts and feelings to the outside world. See, there are two emotions. First emotion is happy and the opposite of happy is sad. Okay, so now when you are happy, how would your tone reflect? Of course, it definitely reflects in the tone of your speech. So you say, hey, okay, I'm glad, I'm happy. And on the other part, if you are not happy or sad, then it definitely reflects in your tone of speech that way. So tone is how you express your thoughts, your feelings to the outside world. So this is an overview of your vocal qualities. And here we need to focus on the words and how we say it. Okay, so we have manner of speaking where we're going to learn about how important the choice of words are, how important is expression when we speak to somebody, pace of voice, your pitch of voice, power in the voice, pausing, clarity in the articulation, speaking with the required loudness. So your choice of words definitely is, a, is very important. See, words can be negative words, it could be positive words, so always try to connect with positive words with someone. Expression, yes. So we need to be expressive. See, first, see there are two things in corporate industry nowadays. First one is style and second is substance. Now, instant, for instance, you go to the office first day and you have excessive style and you lack substance, still it's fine. I'm talking about this uh, industry nowadays, competitive world these days. Now, earlier, if you had substance, that was fine. People used to get encouraged. But now we need to have style and substance both if we need to actually be a part of uh, MNC and do a good job there. So two important things, style and substance. Substance is your technical knowledge first and then your communication. Of course, we need to learn to express ourselves and put ourselves across there to the world. Only then they will be able to understand, oh, wow, such a dynamic communicator so words expressions pace of voice your pitch of voice definitely uh, it, uh, plays a major uh, role pausing yes please pause go slow clarity in articulation see what is articulation and dialect articulation are articulators that we did in the first class which is relevant to anatomy of speech mechanism so articulate meaning Say the, the, pronounce the words the way they are to be pronounced as an honest, uh, you know, design, fish, all these words. So speaking with the required loudness. We need not be soft. We need to be loud, clear, energetic and enthusiastic. Okay. So did we talk about rate of speech? Yes, we did. Fine, the team, so this, uh, okay, now what we'll do is I'll quickly do a recap, okay. Uh, one moment, please give me a moment here. Okay. Okay, any questions, team? Okay, someone... Uh, No, any questions? <laughs> okay. 
So we do not have any questions. We'll proceed with written communication. Tips on how we could improve our written communication. Okay. So before we go ahead with written communication, I'll give you a quick recap of all the tips that we covered to improve oral communication. First tip is listen and comprehend. Second is paraphrasing. Third one is probing. Fourth is rapport building. Fifth is set context to communicate. Sixth one is match and mirror. Seventh is vocal qualities. And eighth one is manner, manner of speaking. And what else did we do? Pace and pausing. Yeah. So please keep in mind that these are the tips that will help you drastically improve your communication skill and sound effective whenever you attend to larger audience and engage with them. Okay, so written communication. Now let's define written. Written communication involves any type of message that makes use of written words. Written communication is most important and effective mode of communication. Now quickly write to me what are the forms of written communication? How do you connect with someone? Through written communication. Okay. So you say hello. Okay. Uh, then, okay. Email. Can you please come again? Okay. So see, there are form, forms of written communication. So it could start off with an email. So just wanted to check your understanding of how do you connect with your friends and with your family through written text. So written communication involves emails, instant messaging, texting, messages, letters. Fine. Okay, and? Okay, so I'll uh, share this uh, thing. Forms of uh, written communication include emails, chat, instant message, letters, memo, reports, and promotion material. So very important, again, uh, team, you know, if you have to internally, uh, you know, interact with your team at work, it's easy to send them, write an email and let them know that, okay, fine, I want to connect with you. So date, subject, body, and signature, yeah. So that is, you know, we are going to do that. Thanks, Kumar, appreciate it. <laughs> We're going to check on that as we do it, email etiquettes in length now, in the next 15 minutes. Okay, so let me give you the objective of this written communication. We are going to learn today how to become an effective writer. So what will be the learning outcome? It's about business writing, letter writing. We're going to learn how effectively to write persuasive uh, writing skills, email and chat etiquettes. I'm really not sure if we could cover chat etiquette in today's session because we actually have just 30 minutes left. So we would go ahead and do in-length email etiquette and the next session which we have scheduled in the month of January 2017, we're going to learn all of this in length. Okay. So let's get started with the written communication team. One moment. Okay, so we've understood the definition of written. So how to improve your writing skills. Now I am going to be starting from left to right in the anti-clock, anti-clockwise direction. So first, my emotion, it again depends on what type of message you're texting. If it's for a friend or it's an official message accordingly, please concentrate on spellings. You know, spellings play a major role because we have learned in our first session there's something called homophones. They sound same, however, they are used in different context and they are spelled differently, right? So spelling and then grammar, yeah, I mean, it's very important. See, if you start writing in present tense, continue the entire letter or the mode of writing in that same tense. There are three tenses, present tense, past tense, and future tense. So present is the action that happens at the time of speaking. Future tense is action that would take place sometime in future. And past tense is action that happened. So I think we, of course, we all know the basic definition of all these tenses. There are four broad classifications of tenses. And we start with simple tense, and then there's continuous, 
perfect tense and perfect continuous tense. Of course, there's a lot of time that we need to, you know, do this particular subject in length, which is giving you an overview of how tense matters a lot and this grammar plays a major role in being effective and trying to let the other person know that, okay, fine, this is what I'm expecting, this is what is the message and did you get it right? So grammar, okay, guidelines, yes, guideline is again set context, proofreading, see there are so many people in rush or maybe in nervousness, they just write and they share the email or instant message please take five minutes time to read the entire letter or the email, proofread it once and then go ahead and share it because there may be sometimes when we kind of make errors, so it's good to go through it and then share it. Capitalization, again, letters, how you start the sentence with a capital letter and end it with a full stop, that is one sentence. If you're using comma, comma denotes the shortest pause in the sentence. So after comma, of course, we continue. So be very particular about capitalization, note taking. Of course, if you've received something, make a checklist of the items that, okay, I need to make a note of. Identify relevance. This is, again, with regards to official communication, right? So if whatever they are referring to, identify, okay, who... See, this could be an, a message that you've received. In case you're writing to somebody, then you need to understand who am I addressing it to. Alternative viewpoint, definitely have your alternatives in place. Structure it well. So we start with body. I mean, sorry, start with the introduction and then the body and then final. Uh, finally, we do the conclusion or the summary of the entire thing. And then key messages, letter, fax and email. Okay, so now that I've given you an overview of how important your writing technique or writing skills and it plays a major role to, of course, be effective here, I'll just give you a highlight of how important is punctuation in written communication. So, okay, now what we would do is we'll make this interactive punctuation. Quickly tell me how many punctuations do you know? And what is the meaning of it? When to use it? Okay. So punctuation, exclamatory, comma, okay, full stop or a period after the end of sentence, use a full stop. For a brief pause, use comma, okay, question mark. For exclamation, use exclamation, okay. Great, any more responses? Okay, so to ask questions, okay, so we need a, we to need to use a question mark, great. So punctuation, we start with, okay, that's an apostrophe. Okay, uh, inverted commas for quotes is inverted comma, fine. So pr punctuation, let me do this in length. First, we start with the full stop or period. So this is, the sentence starts with a capital letter and it ends with a full stop. Next is comma, denotes the shortest pause. And then we have uh, semicolon, and then we have colon, we have inverted commas, exclamation. Exclamation is used to express something, which is, yeah, right, uh, ex a sudden feeling of surprise and emotion. So every uh, sentence with an exclamation will have an exclamation mark. Interrogative sentences, where you start off with what, which, when, why, where, how. So these sentences will eventually end up with a question mark because these are interrogative sentences. And then we have a hyphen. So hyphen will denote multiple words like, you know, in Gita, it is mentioned hyphen, inverted commas, whatever, whoever the character was, so and so, comma, all this. Okay, great. Thanks for your uh, response, uh, team. So that's the overview of punctuation. Punctuation plays a major role. I would uh, certainly like to show you a document here on uh, punctuation. Uh, please give me a moment.
Okay, team. So punctuation, okay, common punctuation marks. Full stop, we have exclamation, question mark, colon, semicolon, apostrophe, inverted comma, question mark, and then hyphen. So what is the purpose of punctuating a sentence correctly? Because if we use incorrect punctuation, then the meaning of the sentence changes. For example, hang him, not leave him free. And hang him not, leave him free. See, there are two different uh, ways to actually look at the same sentence. And a comma played a major role in it. So first sentence signifies you need to hang him. And the second sentence says don't hang him, let him free. Okay. So the second sentence, I mean the second example is private, no, swimming pool, swimming allowed. Private, question mark, no. Swimming allowed. So the first sentence says that swimming isn't allowed and the second sentence signifies that yes, it is allowed. Again, in the age group of so and so. So the criminal says the judge should be hanged. The criminal says the judge should be hanged. Meaning only with uh, this comma. So the second sentence, you know, if we say it correctly, means that the judge needs to be hanged. And the first sentence says the criminal says the judge should be hanged. So that's how it is, uh, you know, of course, identified. So uh, the last example, let us eat daddy and let us eat daddy. So these two sentences, the first sentence is let us eat, meaning they're requesting the daddy to, to I mean, the, no, no, they, they're saying that let us eat our daddy. And the second sentence says let us eat daddy. So allow the kids to eat. So this is the significance of punctuating everything correctly in the right place because English is such language that a small punctuation mark can play a major role and impact on your writing, writing skills. So uh, punctuation, okay, so homophones, students, we did this homophones, right? So homophones are words that sound similar, but they are spelt differently. For example, feet. Yeah, okay, so feet is F-E-A-T and F-E-E-T, right? So there are two different spellings to feet. And when we refer to this word, which is already, okay, one moment, yeah. So already is already, as in I, we are already, A-L-L, already, and already is, we've already done that. So A-L-R-E-A-D-Y. So this is some example of homophone. Okay, now quickly interact with me and yeah, we have a question. Effect, effect, absolutely, yeah. So thanks, Asha. Quickly, okay, wait is, uh, okay. <laughs> thanks, you so much. I mean, intelligent participants. So quickly give me five such words that you know that they sound correct, I mean, similar, and they have different meaning altogether. Okay, so we've received effect, weight. We have plane, as in P-L-A-I-N and P-L-A-N-E. So that's aeroplane, and this is plane. Plane paper, effort, okay, effort. Bear, yeah, warm. See, warm is warm. Okay, it's okay. Right, and W-R-I-T-E, right, text, great. There, fine. Pale, as in someone looks so pale and pale. Okay, go on.
Hi Priya, I believe you muted yourself so we couldn't hear you. Hi Karthik, good morning, yes. Okay, uh, team, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now, Priya. Okay, great. Thank you, Karthik. So thanks for the response, team. Okay, so they've mentioned pray and then fourth, B, yes, okay, mm, hair. Fine. So that was the impact of your uh, punctuation team and significance of punctuating the sentence right to get to the uh, correct meaning of it. Okay, give me a moment here. Okay. So let's get started with oral and written communication. Okay, now what's the difference between oral and written communication? So written is, of course, it can be recorded, but your oral communication, unless it is recorded on your phone or somewhere else, we do not have another day to actually go back and reflect on it. So written communication is for future purpose. Writ oral communication is extempore, it's spontaneous. Okay, so oral is dynamic, written is static, it's immediate. Oral communication, you want to convey a message to your team or get in touch with them, you can quickly talk to them on any topic or, you know, give feedback if suppose you want to give feedback to your team. So call them, say that I want to share feedback with you. So it is immediate and this is less immediate. So lower retention in your oral communication, this has higher retention. So this uh, oral communication is simpler and written communication is more sophisticated. Again, it depends on who you are addressing your emails and chat or if you're talking to your customers, of course, it is sophisticated. If you're referring to your manager or director level communication, it is. So worked on before oral communication, we need to practice. In fact, both, uh, you know, communication is one chapter where we feel that, you know, how much ever I learn, I guess it's insignificant. I need to practice it more and more and do some daily homework. We went on mute. Okay, uh, so it's, uh, oral communication is simple and written communication is so sophisticated. Okay, so team, can you hear me now? I guess you can hear me. Okay, so this is nonverbal, this is only words. Okay, great. And... Uh, Oral communication is in one year and this is rereading that itself, uh, of course, it's a permanent thing. We can go ahead and read it. Reading the audience and adjusting according to the audience. Yeah, that is important in our oral communication and reader retention not known immediate. So uh, oral communication, fewer points to cover and there are more points to cover in written communication. Again, depending on what you type of message you choose to of course, write and then let the other person know. This is catchy and a complete thesis statement. Okay, so this is an overview of how important is oral and written communication, basic difference between oral and written communication. So what's phraseology? Phraseology are words that we actually use to interact on a daily basis with people who we interact with like uh, more often uh, with friends or with family. So we tend to make these errors like say, yeah, okay, sure. So now on the left side, we have responses that we are accustomed to and we use it. Uh, however, there are on the right side, we have response. One moment, we have a question. Okay, body language is also important in overall communication. Yes, uh, Ruksana, it is. it plays major impact in our oral communication. See, I'll give you an example. Someone walks in, I mean, see, when we talk to them, they sound confident. However, it doesn't reflect in their body language. 
you know so they, they are like uh, you're holding their hands uh, you know they fold their legs or they hold their hand they cross their hands and they don't sound that they they're not effective in terms of body language see have you ever looked at people who are generally selling you something they have amazing polished body language why because we first instance you no know, we start noticing the other person and then next start reflecting with what they are saying so we start connecting that way so it's very important body language also plays major role in our oral communication so yeah i would say certainly go ahead and add this point as well so which one of uh, which one is more effective oral or written see both are effective oral communication is effective and written communication is effective see oral what we do is if you see i'll give you an example here so now if you refer back to 40 years Uh, you know previous refer to 40 years before how do you think you used to get connected to somebody overseas there used to be an operator somewhere in between we used to dial the operator and ask the operator hey can i get connected to somebody there maybe in washington or uh, idaho any other location so now that particular operator job isn't there those jobs are taken over by technology right so what in this particular you know competitive world right now what we doing is we making it all technology based so if you have phone first things first please call the person and start talking to them because it's effective it's first hand information and the moment you start connecting with the person know your voice plays major role so i would suggest oral communication is first effective and second in case you know that the person is busy or they're traveling and you uh, would definitely not uh, you know like to disturb them or they would not be available then of course say send text message and then uh, you know put a message on facebook twitter instagram that we would like to connect however significance is uh, oral communication is important and written communication both play major role in today's competitive world and to stay at this particular 100% sound knowledge if we need to have we need to be very effective with oral and written communication team okay any other questions okay so we'll continue with the slide i have you know a quick overview to share with you on email etiquettes as well so we were talking about phraseology instead of yeah say yes sir instead of okay we can uh, yeah uh, you know move on to one moment so okay very well sir so sure will be very well certainly one second instead of one second say just a minute or just a moment see there is no fraction of second that actually enables us to do something or enables us to connect with the other person so effectively so use a minute or a moment whose is if you call okay if the call is for you who am i speaking to so these are the words so speaking is effective i have no idea instead of saying i have no idea let me check and find that information for you okay so useful facts are 50% of population prefer auditory communication 40% prefer visual and remaining 10% prefer other sense Uh, so, you know a conversation is bond forming any questions so you could write the the questions down till then i'll just uh, give you an overview of how important is email and uh, what are the rules to actually follow when we look at email etiquette okay so email when we do an email simply rules to how effective our email writing needs to be email etiquette so this is the objective of this presentation now is team i have over 30 rules here however we would certainly be looking at the first few and rest we are going to continue as in how we do the sessions in length uh, in the next season so the first point be concise and to the point this is about email writing see in email can you start somewhere and can you go on and on and write like a long letter see if in first place if i receive something like over 50 words i would not have interest to even look at it and second is if once i'm not interested i would not even read it so keep it short be concise and clear like what message you want to give to the audience answer all questions and be you know and 
answer all questions and uh, give the right information ask for further questions so an email reply must answer all the questions and if you do not know the answer to the question in original email you will receive further emails regarding the unanswered question so be very specific and clear about what you want to say and in case you are not the person who has first hand information just send them a text message and let them know that okay my team would certainly give you a response in this particular time frame okay so the next rule is use proper spelling grammar and punctuation very important so spellings play major role punctuation like we uh, did that exercise if you have not punctuated the sentence appropriately the meaning of the sentence would change grammar in grammar we have four types of sentences so let me give you an overview here Okay, so these are the four types of sentences. Assertive sentence, imperative, exclamatory, and interrogative sentence. Examples, New Delhi is the capital of India. So we start the sentence with a capital letter, which is N, New Delhi, and we end it with a full stop. So that's one sentence. Please give me your pen. So P is again capital. It ends with a full stop. What a beautiful flower. So it's an exclamation like oh, you're praising something so what a beautiful flower what are you doing this evening you're asking someone hey what are you doing this evening are you free shall we go out for coffee so that those sentences here i mean the interrogative sentence and then can you speak spanish so you're asking someone so these are the four categories so assertive sentence meaning you say any sentence with confidence and imperative sentences are sentences that help you express emotion, wish, command or request. So that is the meaning of imperative sentences. Exclamatory sentences help you express or uh, share feeling of surprise or emotion. So, And interrogative sentences, as we all know, that they ask for, I mean, questions. Okay, cool. So let's move on. Your grammar and uh, punctuation needs to be in place. Make it personal. Not only should the email be personally addressed. Uh, one moment, I have someone asking me something. Okay, which one is more effective, oral or written? We've addressed this. Can you please teach a little bit slow? Because this email communication is representation of a person indirectly. Sure, I would go slow on this. So... Okay. I'm here. Can you Karthik here? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, I was about to answer to Kumar's also. Yes. So team, please do note what you're seeing is at a very beginning level of the program. As we go into day three onwards, we're going to take each and every area of what Ria was talking about and go in deep on that. And we are so, for example, email etiquette. We're saying. The 30 plus rules to it that will give a fair idea for most of the audience how they could improve their email writing ability. So we will be going on them much more detailed team but from day three. This idea is to give you an overall idea of what all is coming up. Right. Uh, remaining few sessions that we have after that. Thank you, Priya. Go on, yeah. So, again, like I said, Priya, maybe just an overview for today. Right. Uh, since we're already to the end of the time also, and then we can go very deep from day three. Correct. Right, Karthik. Thank you. So, Kumar, this is an overview of uh, what we are we planned for the next session. So, okay. We'll continue with this slide. Use proper spelling, grammar, and punctuation. Okay. And make it personal. Not only the email will be personally addressed, and customize the content as in like if you're addressing it to the team then it needs to be as a collective if you're addressing it to an individual then may customize it and then uh, share it okay so let's move on uh, we have uh, used templates for frequently used response now see we have FAQ frequently asked questions and we have response as well so use these there are templates yeah, one moment, okay. 
Okay, I'm so okay. Yeah, no problem. Fine. So some questions you get over and over again, such as directions to your office and uh, save these text as response template. So the next time someone asks you some t similar question, what you can do is you could just refer to the template and then share it. So answer swiftly. See, customers send an email because they wish to receive a quick response. So if they did not want a quick response, they would send a letter or a fax. Therefore, each email should be replied within 24 hours. So see, the moment you see something, you feel like, okay, I'm going to hold this or I'm going to reply to this particular message. Of course, we need to be swift in our response. And only then we can, you know, it's... It's a call, as in you appreciate the other person for taking that particular valuable time and writing to us. And we are reassuring to the person that, yes, we are there to help you out. And this is our response in case we're not, uh, you know, getting to the right answer in this particular email. My team will get back to you as soon as possible. So keep the, you know, conversation clear so the, I guess this would be the last uh, slide that I we would be talking for today discussing today team so the seventh rule is do not attach unnecessary files and when whenever we attach these attachments no you do please do not write this message please find the attachment or something see there cannot be an attachment in the mail that you are actually going to be finding so the right word there would be enclosed is the so and so whatever your attachment or your file your presentation word document excel sheet so enclosed is this document for your uh, for you to view please use these words so do not add attach any unnecessary files only relevant things we not need to attach use proper structure and layout since reading from a screen is more difficult than reading from paper keep it concise properly structured and the layout needs to be appropriate. Use short paragraphs and blank lines between each paragraph. Making uh, When making points, number them and mark each point as separate. Okay, so this is again important. So do not overuse the high priority option. So, okay, now what is this priority option? When all, okay, sorry. We all know the story that the boy who cried wolf, if you overuse the high priority option, it will lose its function when you really need it. Moreover, even if a mail have high priority, your message will come across as slightly aggressive. So uh, if you flag it. So, I mean, there are certain things that, you know, the other person understands, okay, this particular message will take some time. So do not have to highlight it or flag it to the kind of priority level. Make it simple, keep it short, and, uh, you know, it's, it's easy to receive that particular message. Okay, so team, this, as I, uh, Karthik and I, we both mentioned that this is just an orientation, overview session of how we could improve the oral communication and written communication. I'm really glad I got this opportunity to share the information with the team, with you all. And I'm certainly looking forward to you all participating in the next session, which is coming up in January 2017. So do you have any questions so far? Okay. Is this communication skill class introduced for the first time? For the first time at I, in IT eLearn, yes. This is the first time we've integrated communication skill as a part of job placement and certified training program because we've received a lot of feedback from uh, Fortune 500 companies that, yes, technical skills do matter apart from your technical and you, be, I know, team, you are specialized in your subject. So apart from this specialization, if you could just get great with communication skill that will be like a yeah that will be great so we've integrated this communication skill as a part of this training program yeah any other questions okay great so we all are good to go okay is it possible to do hands-on it is possible to do hands-on uh, play okay uh, students write to me at priya it elearn yeah at gmail.com that's my email ID. I would certainly reply to all your emails and keep in touch. 
So I would also like to give you a bit of synopsis of what we are going to cover in January session. We have five weeks training program. So first two weeks we've introduced neutral accent and speech sounds. Next week we have grammar essentials, your writing skills and uh, tense and verb usage, subject verb agreement rules. And last two weeks we cover effective communication skills on how we could, you know, the presentation that we learned in this these three orientation days, we are going to do all of that in length in the last two weeks classes. So that's a short overview. And I'm uh, really, thank you team for being there for your valuable time. So I would like to end this session with this particular magic word, which is until. So uh, promise yourself that you will read the books until your skills change. You will go to seminars until you get a handle on it. You will listen to it until it makes sense. You will go for it until it it would, you, know, you would understand it. You will never give up until however long it is, step by step, piece by piece, book by book, walk along the block so that you do not miss a chance to grow and resolve. Okay. Fine. So here's wishing you all a happy new year 2017 in advance team. What I like about this year for you all is you are beginning a grand adventure and lots of things are going to change and change for the better. And lots of things that you need to come to close will also come to close right now. You are starting to understand how strong a ground you stand on and there is something within you that you can trust, that you can be at ease within yourself. From that place of self-knowing, you are ready to take off in some wonderful and fun interactions of your life. So here's wishing you all all the very best. This is Priya signing off on behalf of IT eLearn. Thank you so much for your valuable time and have a pleasant evening ahead. Thank you, Priya. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Take care all. See you later on day three then. Thanks, Priya.